We're going to ask Brother Haley to pray the blessing. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for our health and our strength, Lord. We pray, dear God, you bless this service today. Touch your word, Lord, and for love and peace, Lord. Let it find love and place in our heart, Lord. We pray you bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's good to be alive in Jesus. It sure feels good that we can freely come to the house of the Lord in worship, in spirit, and in truth. Amen. There's a lot of people going to houses of worship that do not worship spirit, nor in truth. They go there, and I was one. You mean you were one? But I was certainly one. They just went to church because it was good, felt good, and uh, just wanted to be among people that had a hope. But thank God for the scriptures, and thank God for the Lord challenging us to search the scriptures. In search, you're going to find the truth. An honest heart will find the truth. If you're just in for just for the ride and just to be among people as fellowship, then you will establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our Bible lesson today is God's word for today is, a, <clears throat> is about walking in truth. Walking in truth. And we are going to turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. <clears throat> We're going to read that scripture. And the lesson is <clears throat> week four. And boy, time's flying by. It's all ready to September, uh, ready to get into October. But John is writing a letter in First John, in Second John, and Third John, and the Gospel of John, and Revelation, or the Revelation of Jesus Christ. John had a lot of input in writing letters to the church. And I thank God for Apostle John. He brings a lot of light, and he brings a lot of truth, and he was used mightily for the Lord. He writes this letter, and he says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's a beautiful scripture. But the fact of the matter is you've got to walk in the light as he's in the light. Darkness is a, a place that you want to avoid. And the Lord said, I'm the light of the world, and I'm the truth, I'm the way, and I'm the life. And the only way you're going to escape darkness is to get in Christ. The only way you're going to see the light is to walk towards the light and walk with the light and follow the light. I guess the scripture says it's so plain that the Lord's word is a lamp unto our feet, a light to our pathway. Without the word of God, we wouldn't have hope. We wouldn't know what truth versus error was. And the combination of spirit, the spirit of truth, and, of course, the word of God helps us and brings us to a place of being in Christ, in truth, in the light, and in love with God, because God is in love with us. We want to be in fellowship with one another, and we want to be in the light as he's in the light. We're going to go to our another scriptural text, and that's in 2 John chapter 1, uh, uh, 2 John verse 1 through 13, and he writes this. The elder, he describes himself as the elder, he's up in years. And he says, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. 
And not only I, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly, and I have found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that we, as we have heard from the beginning, we should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, have not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your home or house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. That's strong language. The apostle is laying out very plain and strong language. You're not to fellowship with them. You're not to let them in your house. You just label them as what they are, deceivers, liars, false prophets, They're not walking in the truth. They're not walking in the light. And they are come to try to disperse, confuse, and destroy what God has brought together. There are cancers in the body. They are cancers. They're diseases. And you're to expel them. You're to expose them. That's strong language. Having many things to write unto you... I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy, that our joy may be full. That's exactly what Jesus wants, that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. Well, the church was basically in houses. And they would fellowship house to house, worship house to house. They didn't have places like this in Rome, or neither did they have them in Jerusalem. Because the Christians were frowned on. They were hated. They were hated by the pagans. They were hated by the Jews. And so they really had to fellowship in their houses privately and and worship God privately. But they did worship God. And the thing that John and the apostles wanted them to do was to walk in the light. Walk in the truth. Walk in love towards one another, even towards their enemies. And what does that tell you when they say walk? Does that mean to... Just be still, not say anything, be inactive. What is walking? Walking takes effort. Walking means you're going to be active in your faith. Walking means you're going to advance forward 
not backward. Right? We are to follow Christ. And there are different levels and d- different depths, if I can say it that way, of knowing him. We are to walk with him, and we're to know God in ways that um, God wants to show himself. He wants to reveal himself. And you're not going to get that by just lagging behind and just going in any old direction. Because there's a broad way, and there's a narrow way. There are infant Christians, and there are mature Christians. And God wants us to walk. He doesn't want us to crawl like a baby. He doesn't want us to be on milk and from mama. He wants us to eat some meat and get strong and go forward in him. And we got to understand there's a right path and a wrong path. And we got to understand that we got to see clearly. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians. And they are not walking in the light. They are not walking in truth. And they don't love the truth. These are things that we as Christians need to do. Truth is necessary because God is a God of truth. I am the truth. And so when we look into the word of God, we got to understand it's truth or error. You have the spirit of truth, which will lead you into all truth. Or you have the spirit of error where deceivers and antichrist individuals are. You know, we have in this world, and and I'm just going to step into a realm that I know is touch and go with Christians because there are some Christians that actually affiliate and vote for a group or a party that are anti-Christ. It's an evil party. Everything that's not, uh, well, let me just put it this way. There's no left wing and there's no right wing and there's no middle ground. With God, it's black and white. It's either you're with the spirit of truth or you're with the spirit of evil, uh, error. You're either in the light or you're in darkness. There's no gray area. And religion has confused the minds of children and men and women. And um, I'll be honest with you, I, I grew up in religion I didn't know the truth, but God allowed, and I believe does it for every individual, the opportunity to choose whether you want to proceed to believe the truth and to love the truth or just to go about your life doing whatever you want to do and be involved in religion and and truth doesn't matter. To the politician, truth doesn't matter. They will speak anything and everything as long as they get their way, as long as the means justify, or uh, what's that phrase, as long as the means justify the ends. They have a goal, and it could be that they're going to just step on you, lie to you, deceive you, do whatever they have to do to get to that goal because their ideology their belief system is fraud, is in, and they're in darkness. There is no possibility that man can rule man and not be corrupt. Why? The heart. The source of the problem is the heart. It's deceitful. It's evil. It's corrupt. Since the fall of Adam, and Adam chose, he was a transgressor, Adam chose to believe a lie than to believe the truth. Adam chose 
to believe Satan, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of error, than rather to believe and trust God and, and take God at his word. In doing so, he basically called God a liar and did not trust God. I want you to understand the results of that. The results of that, God said, go. Depart, get out of the garden, and forced him out and his wife. There was consequences to his transgression and sin. And there are going to be consequences to your sin, your transgression, if you do not love the truth, if you do not follow the truth, if you do not walk in the truth. The Bible is very specific. John probably was the last disciple, apostle of the faith, and he's writing these letters, and he's telling the church to beware of false prophets, deceivers, those that are anti-Christ. They're trying to come in and be fellowshipping with you, but they are not walking in the truth or in love or in the light. They're going to try to bring false heresies and teachings among you. And they did. And the apostles wrote letters to the churches trying to correct them all the time. They thought that the resurrection has been passed because of the false teachings and heresies. And they were corrected on that. Teaching about this, teaching about that, that Christ is not the king or Christ is just a son of God or, or just belittling what Jesus Christ really is. He is the Lord. He is God, period. Come in the flesh, incarnate, manifest to us to bring truth and light. And his purpose was to destroy what? The works of what? The devil, the master deceiver. Satan has an agenda. He's come as a thief to rob what is God's. That's you and that's me. We were made in his image and his likeness in the beginning. And he almost was successful. But God came to our rescue, for God was in Christ, and he came to reconcile the world back to himself. And he did. He redeemed us. And uh, I'm thankful to know that what the truth is. The truth is, he didn't have to do it, but he did it. The truth is that the real problem of everything is Satan and those that have joined him. The Bible describes that God's going to bring judgment to Satan and his angels. The Bible doesn't describe it as God's angels. As far as God's concerned, the angels that rebelled are Satan's angels, not his. And those that align themselves in the same agenda with Satan and his angels are going to get the same judgment, the lake of fire. There's going to be an awful, awful, serious judgment. But God is God. And he has provided you and I an escape in Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for that. What about you? I am thankful to that. There are qualifications to people that are walking in the truth. God is absolute. He cannot lie. And the truth declares to us, in order for us to see, in order for us to enter the kingdom of God, one must be born again. One must be born of the water, and one must be born of the spirit to enter the kingdom of God. That's the qualifications. 
Also, you must go beyond that. You not only need to speak the truth, you need to walk in the truth. There's a difference. The Bible tells us not just to be doer, uh, not just to be, you know, saying the word of God, but we need to be doers of the word of God. We need to put our faith in action because faith without works is what? It's dead, dead, dead. There is no life to it. And you go to a lot of so-called Christian churches, it's dead. And the reason why there's no life there is there's no spirit of truth being active in their lives. They're not walking in truth. They're walking in darkness. They're believing the heresies and the things that are are just taught by false teachers and false prophets, and they're believing it. Now, Paul writes to those that don't love the truth, beware. There's a problem. God's going to bring what? Strong delusion to you. If you're not going to walk in the truth, if you're not going to believe the truth, if you're not going to love the truth, because God knows the heart, strong delusion is coming your way. And that strong delusion has a purpose. That strong delusion is that it's going to bring damnation to you. You're going to be in darkness and it's going to be so thick, you're not going to know which way is up. You're not going to know which way is the right way. And I'll tell you what, it's a sad situation among Christian churches and what they believe and what they don't believe. It's a sad situation when you've got preachers, teachers, and prophets that are in error and the people are believing it. And the people are being deceived, and strong delusion comes their way, and there's no possibility for them to be saved because they're not going to leave that darkness because they love the darkness. All right. So there is a situation also that not only are you supposed to love the truth, but You need to get into the realm of hating and not just being somewhere in in some kind of gray area, but need to hate that which is not true. Job hated evil. And Satan hated him. And Satan did all he could to destroy him. But God didn't allow it to happen. And Job came out through the testing, pure as gold. It was a long situation. I don't wish it on anybody. But it was put there for a reason. So we can see behind the curtain how Satan operates. Satan hates you. He hates me. He will do anything he can in his power to make you believe a lie and be damned. So we have a real enemy. And um, we must understand we've got to walk in the truth. We've got to be advancing in the truth. We've got to be growing in the knowledge and in the grace of Jesus Christ. We've got to be on the right path, and we've got to see clearly what our goal is, and we've got to press on. It's nothing... This, this kind of language is not unfamiliar with you. We have to press towards the mark. That means it takes effort. That means it's not going to be... Life is not going to be all roses... And fun. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be 
mocking, there's going to possibly be physical abuse. Well, in Europe and in communist lands, they can kill Christians and nothing is said. The government gives the okay on it. The Muslims, hey, it's okay to kill Jews and Christians. It's in the Quran. They got the green light to do it. And you're going to see more of it. And you're going to see more of it. And you're going to see more of it into this country. There are a lot of mosques. There's a lot of Quran believers in this country, in the millions. In the millions. And you need to be on guard because Islam is not a peaceful religion, even though it's spoken by our president to be. And our leaders. But the fact of the matter is, they don't speak against their own. Because the fact of the matter is, there might be a lot of mediocre, setback believers about the Quran, but there are, are radicals. And a lot of their teachers are radicals. In other words, they believe their religion. They believe in their God. They believe in their false prophet. And because they believe in it, they are willing to do whatever it takes because they want to be saved, spared by their false God. Well, what's that leave us to do? Well, we got to walk in the truth. We got to live the truth. We've got to believe the truth, and we've got to share it in love. One of the things that Christians can be faulted with is they threaten rather than minister. If you don't believe what we believe, you're going to hell and, you know, and have an attitude. Well, Jesus was full of the truth, but Jesus was also full of grace. So what's that tell you? If our leader is full of truth and grace, that means you need to, if you're going to walk with him, you got to know the truth, walk in the truth. But with grace, share the truth. And that's what Jesus wants. And so we get into the word of the Lord, and, and, and we go on a little further, and there's so much to deal with because God is a spirit, and they that worship, must, uh, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God does not accept worship that's not in truth. If you don't know God, how can you worship him in truth? If you just believe a God and just worship that God and not know that God, that's not worshiping him in truth. If you are in that realm of beliefism that, you know, I believe a God and I worship that God and not walk in love, not walk in the truth, not love the truth, then you're not accomplishing what the Scripture tells you you need to accomplish because Jesus said, I'm the truth. You're looking at the truth when you look at Jesus Christ. And you're looking at the only way of salvation when you're looking at Jesus Christ. There's no other way. I don't care what anybody tells you. Jesus says, I am the way. You can't get to heaven in the kingdom of God any other way but through Jesus Christ. Say amen. And also on the life. There is no everlasting life outside of Jesus Christ. He says you can have abundant life in him. And you can have peace that passes all understanding. And you can have joy in the Holy Ghost or in the spirit of truth. Other than that, it's not going to happen. And um, I just want to share with my brothers and my sisters this lesson on truth because if you continue in my word, Jesus said, and then you'll be my disciples. You'll be my students. 
And if you do that, indeed, then you shall know the truth. You can never know a lie. You can't fellowship with a lie. You can't know a lie. But you can know the truth. You can fellowship with the truth. And you can be in the light because Jesus wants you in the light. And the truth shall make you or set you free. What's it going to set you free of? Delusion, deception, falsehood, lies, darkness, bondage. And they can go, the list can go on and on and on and on. But Jesus said, hey, you come follow me. You're going to get to know me. You're going to get to trust me. And you're going to be free. Because the Son of God has come to free us, not to judge us. He's come to save us, not to destroy us. So I'm glad to be free of delusion and error. I'll tell you what, it was the mercy of God that reached into my life. I wasn't looking for this because I was just like like anybody else, lost, in a lost condition. Darkness was a part of my spiritual experience, and I was just roaming around, and I was listening to the Jehovah's Witnesses. I was listening to uh, the Baptists. I was listening to this, and I was listening to that, and... All of a sudden, my life came to a standstill, and God dealt with me. I believe everybody, everybody gets to hear the truth once. I mean, that's why I believe America is on the target, the bullseye, by those that are opposed to Christianity. They know if they can get to America, they can probably shut down Christianity because we send out missionaries to all the countries. I don't don't say all the countries, but most of the countries out there, and our missionaries go out in the name of the Lord to declare the truth, to preach the truth. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. And it's glad tidings. It's good news to the lost souls. We do not preach fear, though we know there are consequences to our sins if we continue being a transgressor. But the truth is always the truth. It's absolute. God is absolute. You ain't going to change God for nothing. God will not change for you, and he will not change for me. He has declared who he is, what he is, and said, this is the way. And I am it. That's your choice. So your choice is either to follow him or deny him. And if you don't walk in the light, if you don't walk in truth, you are denying him. I don't care if you go and sit among the the pews, among the, the people that love God. The thing you need to understand is when the Bible in the, in the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, John writes these letters to these churches. The Lord rebukes them, a lot of them, most of them. But to all of them, he's basically saying, to them that overcome, I will grant. And it is to the overcomers. It's not to everybody that attends church. It's to those that attend church, love truth, walk in the truth, and overcome the flesh and the lust thereof. I fight them. Do you fight the lusts of your flesh? I fight them. I continue to fight them. I'm 30-something years in this, and I still fight them. And I'll fight the corruptness of this flesh until the day I'm either taken up or the day I die. It's an ongoing thing because the flesh has been corrupted. The seed has been corrupted. You not only see it in the flesh as far as its physical aspects with diseases and deformities and all this stuff. You think God designed us 
to have deformities and sicknesses and diseases? That was not the will of God. That was the results of sin, transgression. That is the result of not believing God and taking God at his word. It has haunted the human race since Adam fell. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why we come to church and we rejoice in him, and that's why we worship him, because the fact is he's our way out. He's the light of our life. Without him, we'd be in darkness. Without him, the spirit of error would be deceiving us. Satan would have his way with us. There is so much deception out there. There is so much lies. There is so much heresy and false teaching among churches. Think about, I I think I had a list one time of how many divisions of Christian churches there are. Because the fact is, there was an original. There was an original church. And there was the original 12 disciples that followed the truth. One bugged out and betrayed. The others held on. They denied him. They scattered from him when the crisis came. But the fact of the matter is he did not deny them. He loved them. He came back to them, and he taught them. He opened up their understanding. He brought them deeper into the light so they would know him. And they did preach and teach and went out as missionaries to the world to share Jesus Christ. And the gospel goes on today. Say, praise the Lord. But you got to go into that realm of obedience, and, you know, obeying the truth is is so important. You need some paths to actually avoid. You need to understand that it's not okay to be baptized any way you want to be baptized. It's not okay to be just believe anything you want to believe about God. It's not to it's not okay to believe that, you know, oh, there's no hell. There's no judgment when the Bible tells you there is going to be a judgment and there's going to be consequences for not believing and loving the truth. So those that abide in the doctrine of Christ are going to, they're going to be okay. But those that don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, there is a rude awakening for them. And we are not to receive them and be pals with them. We're not to just, you know, not to fellowship with them in the sense that, you're, you know, you're going to give them Godspeed. You're not going to tell them God bless you. No, you don't do that. You avoid them when they start bringing up doctrine and teaching that is not truth. They don't believe in the oneness of God. They don't believe in Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. They don't believe in in filling of the Holy Ghost. That the Bible says is a promise to us. You know, they get into all these other kind of weird doctrines and avoid them. The Bible says they're of the Antichrist. They're not standing with God. They're not standing with truth. They're not walking in the truth. And it's harsh, and it's, and, it's, and it's tough. I've got family that's like that. I love them. But if you're going to start bringing up doctrine and teaching, I'm going to just put it right on the line. This is the truth. And if you don't want to live it, don't want to abide by it, don't want to do, have anything to do with it, that's your choice. I am not going to make you. Well, there is in the Islam, Muslim religion, if you will not convert to it, you're a dead man or a woman or a child. They have no mercy. But God has mercy. God gives you the choice. He says, come unto me. I know you labor and you labor hard, but you know what? 
you can come to me and you can know me. You can understand me. And my way is not hard. It's easy. God doesn't make us do all kinds of things and, you know, climb the highest mountain, swim the English Channel, or anything foolish like that to achieve, you know, to be a Christian. Simply believe the truth. Believe him. Take him at his word and obey the, what he asks you to obey. The thing that I really want to stress is you don't want to be in deception. And you don't want to get into that realm of being in that gray area where, well, does it really matter? Yes, it matters. Yes, it matters. The Christian church paid a dear price in the day of John, in the day of Paul, in the day of Peter. It cost them their lives to believe what they believed. But they refused to deny him. And they went to their death believing that God is their deliverer and Savior. And so false teachers and deceivers and antichrists are among us. They're in the church. They're outside the church. And think it not strange that what the Scripture says in the last days The Bible says that, yeah, there's coming a dragon out and the beast and the false prophet, and they come to deceive the kings of the earth. And I want you to take note that they worked miracles. Not everybody that works miracles is of the truth. Do you understand me? Don't follow miracles, signs, and wonders, especially in these last days. It doesn't mean they're of the truth doesn't believe they love the truth or walk in the truth because the devil can do these things. He can do supernatural things. And the Bible says that, <clears throat> that the Antichrist will come with power and signs and wonders and lying wonders. And uh, you know what? Avoid following miracles and signs and wonders because signs and wonders and miracles are to Follow them that believe. Let's get it right. If you believe right, if you love the truth, follow the truth, signs and wonders will happen among us. And they are happening among us. It may not happen to you personally, but that doesn't mean that they're not happening. I rejoice to hear all the miracles and signs and wonders that happen overseas among people that have nothing. They don't have homes. Their country is is run by just terrorists. And yet, we hear about people being raised from the dead and all these good things. And it happens in America, too, but not as much because there's just a, a believism in America about Christianity. It really don't matter what you believe. It does matter what you believe. It does matter to God if you're walking in the truth. It does matter to God because he knows the heart. And if you're abiding in him and him abiding in you and his word abiding in you, he knows all about it. He knows his children. And he knows those that are just sitting back just because mom or dad believe it or sitting back because of who knows what. I'm not going to get into it. It's not my, my teaching My teaching is, don't be ignorant. And Paul said to the brethren, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Ignorance is a... Ignorance is a sad thing because you don't need to be ignorant in a church. The church is full of good teaching. And if you have the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, you can discern what is right, what is wrong, in your heart, because your heart has been changed. The spirit of truth has come in, and now you are newborn, a new creature in Christ, because that's what God wants, and God wants you to understand the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, what is right, what is wrong, what the path to go down, and the path for you and I can vary. 
what the will of God is. The will of God for you might be something, and the will of God for me is something different. And you're not the arm, and you may not be the leg, but you're something in the body of Christ because every piece of the body has a function. And you need to find out where you are in the body of Christ. You need to seek the Lord. Seeking truth brings results. I don't believe God has a deaf ear. Sometimes I wonder, where are you, God, in my situation? But God doesn't have a deaf ear. He knows and he hears. And the eyes of the Lord are upon who? The righteous. Now, if you have Jesus Christ, you have the spirit of truth in you, you've been baptized in Jesus' name, and you believe what you believe concerning the word of the Lord, that the pages are not just written of words that don't matter, but the pages are written of words that do matter, then you are considered righteous in the eyes of the Lord because the righteousness of God is what's going to save you. Your righteousness is not going to save you. That's why the Bible talks about by grace are you saved and not by works. It's talking about you can't earn your way to heaven. It's a gift. And Jesus Christ has brought it to us. Well, you're not going to be saved without works either. Because your faith without works is dead. And so walking is an effort. Walking is you're advancing in the kingdom. You are gaining ground. You are fighting devils. You're fighting your flesh. You're fighting false doctrine. You're fighting false teachers. You debate them. You speak the truth. And you are warned not to fellowship with them. Don't allow them in your house because they bring spirits. We deal with spirits. I've had Jehovah Witnesses in my home trying to convert them. And I would bring truth to them from our King James Bible, from the Holy Scriptures, and they would turn to their book. And they would not believe the truth. Well, I planted the seed. But the fact of the matter is, I have never won a, a Jehovah Witness, no matter how many I've talked to. That's my experience with it. But you plant the seed, truth. Hopefully, they'll turn and understand that, yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is not another angel. He is not this or that. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is their, what they believe is their Jehovah. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. That's the facts. And so I want to be on the right road. There's many blessings on the right road. You get to enjoy liberty. You get to enjoy victory. You get to overcome the flesh. You get to battle devils and see victory in your life and in other people's lives. We come together and, and assemble ourselves. We pray. We believe. We hear the correction by our pastor under the anointing of the Holy Ghost so we can correct our ways. Maybe we're not being true and going down the straight road. We're kind of de deviating here, left or right. And I, you know, God doesn't want you going to the left or right. He wants you going straight. There's a gate, and it's narrow, and you got to understand that. And few are those that go into it. I don't like that. I wish it would say many, but the many go into the broad way, into the broad gate. That's the facts. Jesus said it. The truth is the truth, and it's sad. But I just want to share some things concerning this lesson that we got to understand that we can know the truth. We can know him. 
And the greatest thing, according to what Jeremiah said, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, is that for man is to know and understand him, the Lord. To know him and to understand him, to walk in his ways. His ways are different than our ways. Our ways can bring confusion, and we can be walking in the darkness and not even realizing it. But his ways are always the right ways. And I want to just share with you, and we're coming to a conclusion in our, our lesson, but I just want to share one more scripture. Because Jesus did have an encounter with Pilate before his crucifixion. And Pilate drilled him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus didn't answer him right away, kept silent. And Pilate marveled at that. But as the drilling and the questioning kept forth, came forth, Jesus did say, you know, what you said is the truth. I am the king of the Jews. Whether you believe it or not, whether they believe it or not, I am the king of kings and the Lord. But in his discussion with Pilate, what comes forth in this discussion is Pilate said, what is truth? <laughs> what is truth? You know, as a politician, that speaks volumes. Because truth seems like it's thrown out the window. It doesn't matter to the politician, to those that are governing in power and authority, as far as men are concerned. Our government, as much as we have founded as much of it on Christian princi principles, is going into a direction that is anti-Christ. It's not good enough not just to acknowledge Christianity, but they want to get rid of God. They really do. You can see our schools and the situation our schools are in since they want, got rid of prayer and got rid of anything to do with God in the 60s. And these are children of the 60s that are in charge right now. And you wonder why we have the mess we have. Continue to walk in truth. Continue to walk in love. Continue to love the truth. And believe me, you will not be dissatisfied or unhappy. You will enjoy the results. God bless you.